Today we're going to discuss the most successful military airlifter ever, the C-130 Hercules. The creation of the C-130 Hercules came about largely as a result of America's experience in the Korean War. U.S. forces fighting along the 38th parallel dividing North and South Korea quickly discovered that their aerial transports were ill-equipped for the missions at hand. Some were too heavy, some needed longer runways for takeoffs and landings. Others had weight restrictions which prevented them from transporting bulky supplies or large numbers of soldiers. What the U.S. military needed was a single versatile aircraft that could be used for any and all transportation needs. One aircraft that would perform the role of many. Like in this video, an amazing impression was made when Lt. James H. Flatley III landed the 85,000-pound behemoth on the USS Forstall CVA-59. He parked a bus in a compact space, and he made it look easy. This is a great achievement that Lockheed's Hercules accomplished. The Lockheed C-130 Hercules is an American four-engine turboprop military transport aircraft designed and built originally by Lockheed. Capable of using unprepared runways for takeoffs and landings, the C-130 was originally designed as a troop, medevac, and cargo transport aircraft. The versatile airframe has found uses in a variety of other roles, including as a gunship, a C-130, for airborne assault, search and rescue, scientific research support, weather reconnaissance, aerial refueling, maritime patrol, and aerial firefighting. It is now the main tactical airlifter for many military forces worldwide. More than 40 variants of the Hercules, including civilian versions marketed as the Lockheed L-100, operate in more than 60 nations. The C-130 entered service with the U.S. in 1956, followed by Australia and many other nations. During its years of service, the Hercules family has participated in numerous military, civilian, and humanitarian aid operations. In 2007, the C-130 became the fifth aircraft to mark 50 years of continuous service with its original primary customer, which for the C-130 is the United States Air Force. The C-130 Hercules is the longest continuously produced military aircraft at over 60 years, with the updated Lockheed Martin C-130J Super Hercules currently being produced. Two things have made the Hercules unique. First, it was conceived as a rugged, versatile airlifter that could meet the transportation needs of diverse users by landing almost anywhere with 20 tons of cargo. Second, the Air Force and Lockheed continuously invested in new technology to improve the plane's performance for six straight decades. So over time, it became more than just a mover of people and things, it also became an aerial refueler for the Marine Corps, a covert insertion or extraction asset for Air Force Special Operators, a search and rescue plane for the Coast Guard, a gunship for supporting soldiers on the ground, and a hurricane hunter for the Weather Service. Seriously, the plane looks capable of doing almost anything. It resupplies bases in Antarctica using skis as landing gear. It conducts harrowing medical evacuations in the hot and dusty climate of Afghanistan. It flies at treetop level to drop flame retardants on forest fires in national parks. It has even been used to deliver shock and awe munitions against the dictatorship of Saddam Hussein weapons so big that they wouldn't fit on the planes in the U.S. bomber fleet. All of these missions have been accomplished while sustaining one of the lowest accident rates of any U.S. military aircraft. 
Now let's talk about the design features of the C-130 Hercules. In its personnel carrier role, the C-130 can accommodate 92 combat troops, or 64 fully equipped paratroops on the side-facing seats. For medical evacuations, it carries 74 litter patients and two medical attendants. Paratroopers exit the aircraft through two doors on either side of the aircraft behind the landing gear fairings. Another exit is off the rear ramp for airdrops. The C-130 can deliver personnel, equipment, or supplies either by landing or by various aerial delivery modes. Three primary methods of aerial delivery are used for equipment. In the first, parachutes pull the load, weighing up to 42,000 pounds, from the aircraft. The second method, called the container delivery system, uses the force of gravity to pull from 1 to 16 bundles of supplies from the aircraft. The low altitude parachute extraction system is the third aerial delivery method. The C-130's designed maximum gross weight is 155,000 pounds, or 175,000 pounds in wartime, with a normal landing weight of 130,000 pounds. The operating weight is approximately 80,000 pounds. The airplane is capable of airlifting 92 ground troops, 64 fully equipped paratroopers, or 74 litter patients. It can also carry 45,000 pounds of cargo. In addition, the C-130 fuselage has a semi-monocoque design and is divided into a flight station and a cargo compartment. Seating is provided for each flight station. The cargo compartment is approximately 41 feet long, 9 feet high, and 10 feet wide. Loading is from the rear of the fuselage. Both the flight station and the cargo compartment can be pressurized to maintain a cabin pressure altitude of 5,000 feet at an aircraft altitude of 28,000 feet. For the aircraft dimensions, the C-130 has a 132 feet 7 inch wingspan, is 97 feet 9 inches in length, 38 feet 5 inches in height, and 52 feet 8 inches in the horizontal stabilizer. And no less important is the power plant and propellers. Prior to the C-130J, the C-130 Hercules was provided with four Allison turboprop engines that are attached to the wings. The engine nacelles have cowl panels and access doors forward of a vertical firewall. Clamshell doors are located aft of the vertical firewall. Air enters the engine through a scoop assembly at the front of the nacelle. For its propellers, also prior to the C-130J, the C-130 is equipped with four Hamilton Standard Electrohydromatic constant speed, full feathering, reversible pitch propellers installed on each engine. And the last point we are going to talk about is its service life. Although service life computations are not used to determine grounding or airframe restrictions, the Air Force does use service life estimates as a planning tool to anticipate when major aircraft structural events can be expected. A key issue is the structural service life of the C-130 airframes, which depends on mission severity, fatigue, and corrosion factors. Severity factor accounts for the difference between normal civilian flying and military flying, which is low-level, short-field landings, etc. Mission profile determines the severity factor, which is averaged over the aircraft's most recent two-year history. This translates airframe clock hours into equivalent airframe damage hours, which indicate the higher aging rate of the military airframes. On average, active C-130 aircraft fly approximately 600 hours per year, while ARC C-130E and C-130H aircraft fly about 375 hours and 450 hours per year respectively. Currently, the critical fatigue components for the C-130 fleet is the center wing box, which is structurally more susceptible to the stresses of mission profile and payload. The center wing box has a limit of 60,000 relative baseline hours. 
A corrosion limit of 40,000 flight hours is based on historical data and engineering judgment. It considers corrosion factors not considered in airframe fatigue analysis. Actual airframe service life depends on which limit, fatigue or corrosion, is reached first. The average age of the active duty C-130 fleet is over 25 years old, while the average age of guard and reserve C-130s is 15 years old. The average age of the C-130E model is over 28 years old, and the average flying time is approximately 19,800 hours, the newest E model being produced in 1972. Based on projected operations tempo and overall mission severity, C-130E aircraft have an average remaining service life of 15 years. Material solutions such as Selective Repair, a Service Life Extension Program SLEP, or procurement of new aircraft are several ways to influence and resolve the aging of the C-130 fleet. We can conclude that this perfect airlifter has enjoyed an incredible career and continues to serve some 60 nations in a variety of roles. Thanks for watching.